Get your baggage ready. From The Simpsons to House Targaryen, if TV has taught us one thing, it's that there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the people we call family. Much like what they say about Transformers, we are more than meets the eye. Seeing so many people dancing in unison generates a lot of energy, but also a lot of emotion, I'd say. There's a direct correlation between me working in color and with my daughter's birth. We came here to rock, we came here to party, and if it sounds like it, then we know we're on the right track. I'm Hot Rod, I'm from the Cybertronic Spree. With me is, of course, Rumble and RC. Uh, not present, but also part of the band is the Unicron, the Quintesson, Soundwave, Bumblebee, and Shockwave. I was, like a lot of musicians here on Earth, uh, living out of my car, you know, transformed. I had Transformers movie soundtrack going on the stereo, and I thought it would be an amazing idea to just relive that soundtrack live. So I phoned up a bunch of bots and saw that, yeah, they were into doing it. So we were supposed to land in Detroit Rock City, but I was driving and uh, I kind of scooped in a little early there, so we crashed here in Toronto. But it's kind of been a better choice. It's a lot of songs about overcoming the odds and doing your best in the face of adversity and also having a good time while doing it. It's difficult writing music together because we have a lot of perspectives in the band. There's jerky Decepticons that interrupt you when you're trying to make a point. There's Autobots, of course. And then there's mechanical monstrosities of unknown classification who, for whatever reason, have decided to throw their lot in with us. On the surface, people might look at us and come to our shows and listen to our music and think, all right, this is a band that's all about partying and having a good time. And they would be right. But much like what they say about Transformers, we are more than meets the eye. We're going to celebrate our five-year anniversary right here where it started in Toronto. It's taken us quite a bit of time to compose something that we feel proud collectively releasing. Uh, we had a song called Cybertronic Warrior and we think it really uh, touched a node because humans have been asking us to do more original material and less covers. A finely crafted rock song does take time to make, especially when there are eight creative sentient minds at work. It's got to be banging. But the good thing about playing other people's music is that fans of those other bands will find us and hear our versions of the songs that they love so much. Now we could start making original music that hopefully they're going to dig. It's something we can't ignore anymore. We just, we got to give the people what they want. Yeah. And they want to rock to our original music. We are from a planet full of struggle. And we come here to Earth, and a lot of the Earth seems like it's past those things that we fight about on Cybertron, and yet at the same time, there's enormous struggles here too. RC, the Leafs are supposed to lose. I'm letting them win. Ah. Where we're headed next is unknown. We thought maybe we'd be around for, I don't know, a few shows, but um, I guess the internet here has other plans for us. When you think about it, the Cybertronic Spree are like any other family. They argue, they laugh, they travel through star systems and experience global triumph. I'm guessing that their reunions are pretty lit. Hey, 
It's the family episode. You gotta let me slip in a dad joke. Today we are talking about families and the way they can inspire, facilitate, and shape our artistic creations. From chosen families, like the ones created by our Transformers earlier, to blood families, like the ones you'll see later, we are covering it all. In case you haven't figured it out, you are tuned in to CBC Arts Exhibitionists. I'm Amanda Paris. The funny thing about family is that, although there may be a lot of people in it, there's often one person who holds it all together. The glue who brings the laughs, the comfort, and the real talk. In my family, that person is my grandmother. I remember when I was growing up, I would always wonder why she had the most presents under the Christmas tree. But it makes sense now. She's the one who makes the Paris family whole, and we all adore her for it. Dorothy Gordon was that person for a different kind of family. This one is made up of 250 dancers, and at the age of 92, Dorothy's passion inspired them all. So, that was a good run. So, I'm sure everybody, each of you, did at least one mistake. My name is Sylvain Aymar. I'm the choreographer of Le Grand Continental, which we are rehearsing here at the Varsity Arena. It's a dance piece based on line dancing, and it has a cast of almost 250 dancers that are going to be performing at the end of the Festival Lubinato on Nathan Phillips Square. When I create the cast, I'm trying to have a nice representation of the diversity of the city. So I wanted the cast to reflect that in terms of ages also. Like the youngest dancer is 11, I think, and the oldest is 92. My name is Dorothy Gordon. Dorothy liked the Wizard of Oz, Gordon liked the gin. Uh, 68 years I've done classes nonstop, about three a week. I did the Estonians and then I got into jazz. And then jazz got so funky, I thought ballet looked easy. So 71, I tried ballet and I'm still doing that. When I see Dorothy, it is very inspiring because I never thought that a 92 year old woman could do all of this work. Watching Dorothy dance, you know, makes me smile like this, you know, and I just I look at her and it's like, it's so beautiful and it's so inspiring and she inspires the whole cast actually because they, it's like their idol right now. It's like, oh Dorothy, you know, it's, it's, it's very inspiring and she, she's so beautiful to watch. When there's music with a beat, somehow I just want to go and I look around and not everybody's built that way, you know, some people can just sit and listen. <laughs> they've been rehearsing for three months and now they're showing what they've done and they all work together, so it's a very nice energy. Seeing so many people dancing in unison generates a lot of energy, but also a lot of emotion, I'd say. You see people giving all they can give, you know, to the, you know with the dance and they're very um, vulnerable also because they're not professional, so they're, they are very generous to expose themselves dancing their heart out. Hi, I'm Daphne Le Duc Laprise. I am from Montreal, and I'm this week's exhibitionist in residence. My work is coming from fighting sadness and boredom with absurdity. So I love animating the weird, the kitsch, the fun and the colorful to brighten your day and hopefully make you smile. Coming up, get ready for your heart to burst with this father-daughter artist duo.
I like to believe that we have the power to shape and determine our own destinies. But there are three arenas where the power is definitely not in our hands. When we're born, where we're born, and who ends up being part of our blood family. For better or worse, in these three arenas, we're all at the mercy of fate. For this next artist, the place that he was born and the time he was born in led him to witness some harrowing things. Thankfully, his luck came through in the third arena. The birth of his daughter opened up a whole new way of seeing the world that has now filtered into his art. Take a look. It's the one thing that we lose as adults. You know, we start to lose our relation to our childhood. But like the second you start getting in touch with that childlike way of thinking, I don't know, it just shaves a few years for you and, and just the way you think. Like I, I feel so much lighter now. Like I've, I've learned a great deal from surrendering myself to this, this process. Um, My name is Lindsay Levendahl, born and raised in Cape Town, South Africa. Been living in Saskatchewan for the past seven years. A small little place called Melford, which is basically the gateway to the Northern Lights. If you know what South Africa and our politics are and our history, it, um, it was pretty colorful. The isolation aspect of my work was kind of finding a different way to deal with struggle, poverty, all those things. It was something that wasn't heard of, it was in your face. You saw it. And so that, that formed a basis behind my work and, and also just my philosophy in life. Now I choose to pursue a better kind of way of looking at things um, instead of just being highly entrenched in the negativity, which is like... <laughs> Moving to Canada was probably one of the best and the worst things that could have happened to my experience as an artist. There was no distractions, so that was what winter meant. You kind of are dealing with the fact that you have to have some serious downtime where you're going to be exposed to some of the darker crevices of your mind. It was like this big mirror just kind of appearing, and that is scary. <laughs> with any sort of transitioning period, there's so much lessons to be learned. And so, you know, I just try to be as open as possible to how much I can absorb. I'm gonna give it some green teeth. Disgusting green teeth. <laughs> There's a direct correlation between me working in color and with my daughter's birth. For me, the aspect of collaboration was just a natural progression. It was just myself and my daughter killing time, sitting and drawing. But what I found was that, like, I was really interested in the way that she was making certain marks. There were certain kind of strokes, the way that she held the pencil. She was achieving different kind of ways of creating, purely uninhibited. And, uh, like, I, I just couldn't understand, like, how she was doing these kind of things. And so I started paying a little bit more attention to this process. And do a nice one here, soft line, soft line. There you go. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Tallulah has changed the way that I, I view life, and um, I don't take that very lightly. I think it was a, like a life lesson as well, you know, not to just be too, too caught up and precious about every single thing. It's actually nice to just give yourself over to something that's unknown. That's what I started doing more and more. Like the more I started making things with Tallulah, things started looking interesting for me. There's not enough fathers actually taking the time out. And time is, is the thing. Like um, for me, that's how I've chosen to show my love is through giving of myself. And I've made it a mission that, like, my daughter and my son will know that they were loved by the images that I make. Coming up, the formula for this next artist's work, a little glass, a bit of enamel, and a lifetime of memories.
My mom always tells the story where she says that I was a baby and I was crying and I was just uh, uncontrollable and she didn't know what to do with me and she sat me in a chair, gave me paper and pen and then I stopped crying and I started drawing and I never stopped. And the funny thing is when I look at my drawings today from when I was a kid, I still do the same things. It's a lot of color, a lot of pattern, it's characters, it's all about their emotion. I didn't grow up in Montreal, although I was born here. Uh, when I was about four years old, we moved uh, to Martinique. So growing up in the islands um, had quite an impact on the way I approach my work, especially in terms of colors and in terms of patterns. Um, the nature over there is very big, it's very luscious. Um, it's impossible to escape it. There's always a lot of big flowers around, big trees. So this is something I, that you can find in my work. I think it's this light, this uh, life um, through the patterns and the colors and the energy of the characters as well. So. When I started jewelry, um, so it, even though I liked the techniques and working with the tools, I came to a point where I missed the colors. No, I never thought of giving up, but I was, I'm very stubborn too. So I wanted to find a way of adding color into my work. At the school, they also offer classes outside of the program. And there was this enameling class that was taught. Um, and just like jewelry, I had no idea what enameling was really. I knew you could add color and that it would be uh, lasting, it's glass. But I had no idea of all the techniques and, and what it entailed, you know? Um, and so my mom offered me a class and it was just a one day workshop. And we did something very basic, just having like square little tiles of copper and just sifting some powder on it and putting it in a kiln, letting it melt and then it's there forever. I fell in love with that process. I thought, that's it. And at the end of my studies at the jewelry school, my final project had enamel. And that project actually was about traveling and about the islands. So it was this necklace that made of silver. There was two big islands here that were colored with pink and, and blue. And that was for me like a way to depict uh, those places where I've been. And there was like a little, um, kind of little container here where you could put precious things. I lost my father when I was very young in the islands. And that's something that had a really big impact on our lives because we had to move a lot. Um, so it was always about carrying the things that are most precious to you, you know. Um, and, I, and I think this is also one reason why color is important. It's like colorful and I draw these characters that are happy. Drawing for me was a way to also kind of put all of those feelings aside and try to, to put myself in a world that's maybe a little happier than what real life is. It seems like creating work inspired by family has helped Aurelie find her happy place. It's so fascinating the way that memories of your childhood, the places you lived, the moments you had, can get written into the art you make. I love it. If there's an artist that you think should be on CBC Arts Exhibitionist, or if you just want to share your own art inspired by family with me, the sketch of your little sister putting on her first ice skates, the song you wrote for your grandparents on their anniversary, or the home video of your drunk uncle doing hammer time at Thanksgiving? I'd love to see it all. Send me a message on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Our handle is at CBC Arts. Before we go, meet James Rays, an artist we found on YouTube. His videos have millions of views, and he's made a special one just for us, powered by a very special collaborator. Check it out. Peace. Hi, I'm James Rays. I'm known on the internet as the box office artist. I've been a professional artist for about 20 years. I've worked in comic books. I've worked in film. I've worked in television. But one of my favorite pieces of art that I love to do 
is drawing with my son. What I love to do is have my son design drawings and I would go ahead and take those designs and then draw them in my style. It's so much fun. He loves them and I think what I'd like to do today is do the same thing. Now my son, he put together this particular design. A very, very cool design and I decided maybe I should try to draw this in my style. I take my red pencil and I start lightly sketching out a nice pose for the character. And after this quick sketch, I already go in to the details. The torso has a very interesting design. It looks like he's wearing like this leather jacket and on top of it, it's like this trench coat. It's like half trench coat that has the sleeves cut off, right? <laughs> Onto the pants, which is really cool. It looks like he's wearing bell bottoms. <laughs> bell bottoms with a checker pattern. Also here, he has like some disco high heel shoes. <laughs> I like to make uh, his designs more superhero-ish, so I like to give him big arms. Right? So, <laughs> and finally, the mallet or club that he's carrying here. And there you go. That is my interpretation of his full drawing. Now, all it's missing is a little bit of color. So why don't we put some color on this drawing? And I want to thank CBC Arts for having me uh, do this video for them. It was a lot of fun to do.